Okay, uh, our weekly AI updates, June 7, and uh, it's a bit slower, but still a lot of interesting updates. And uh, the main event of this week is uh, uh, this conference called Computex 2024 in Taiwan. So this is the map of uh, China, and there is a Taiwan, and on the top, here is the convention center, and... Uh, uh, very interesting keynote by NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang. It's it's even poetic. It's 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 absolutely amazing. Like <laughs> I, I highly recommend to actually listen to it. Uh, he talks about uh, how they are building factories which produce tokens, and uh, tokens maybe for everything, not just for text. They may be for images, for video, for whatever your your subject is for science and it changes life uh, also very interesting because sam altman was giving interview and he was saying that maybe universal income will not work and instead of money people will use uh, like universal uh, access to, to compute to ai <laughs> so the society will definitely change and anyway there were a lot of very interesting announcements on, on this uh, conference so one of them is uh, uh, the applications uh, on RTX uh, GPUs. So the standard like NVIDIA RTX uh, 3090 or 4090. So there's a regular gaming GPUs, which uh, people can insert in their desktops. And now NVIDIA has come up with a lot of applications which use these GPUs, uh, not just for gaming, uh, not just for uh, doing the video, like they're talking about uh, like uh, acceleration, Star Wars, like whatever different games, but uh, also they start using it for AI. Uh, so for example, uh, Project G Assist AI Assistant. Well, this is context where help for PC gamers, right? NVIDIA Avatar Cloud Engine. Again, very interesting project, uh, generative AI microservices in the cloud for digital humans. Uh, customer service, gaming, uh, and so on. NVIDIA NIM, uh, Neural Inference Microservices, a similar concept. Uh, SFF, small form factor. So on this uh, picture, you see this uh, small boxes, uh, which are uh, GPU enabled and AI optimized. And uh, this is another in interesting uh, area. Uh, yes, and gaming, of course. Uh, another thing that NVIDIA now is ahead of Apple in terms of overall capitalization. This happened just this week. So the largest company in the world is Microsoft, <laughs> 3.16 trillion, uh, closely followed by Nvidia and then by Apple. And Amazon and Google are like smaller. Uh, okay, uh, another announcement was very interesting. They introduced a new architecture. Uh, named after Vera Rubin. So Vera Rubin was an American astronomer. So she died in 2016. And uh, as with uh, uh, Grace Hopper, uh, where is, uh, you have Grace CPU and Hopper GPU, uh, now we have Vera Rubin, where Vera is CPU and Rubin is GPU. So this architecture will be introduced in 2026, but it's already announced. There are some interesting pictures. Okay, uh, next is uh, about uh, local models with long context. Uh, there are multiple models to consider. So here I collected a list and some links and discussions. And uh, uh, so first of all, what is context? When you give text to the model, right, it converts it to tokens, uh, each token is converted to a vector. And let's say you have, I don't know, 8K, uh, that means 8,000 uh, tokens. So 8,000 vectors. And these vectors are passed from layer to layer of uh, the uh, architecture of the network, right? Uh, how many layers? It may be 30 something, 60 something, 80, 100. Uh, and then uh, this is the your input and then it produces the output and output is usually much smaller than the input so for example consider gpt 40 the input can be 128 
uh, killer tokens, right? But the output is only four uh, killer tokens. So it's a very, very small. That's why I wrote it like this. Also, context length is uh, usually counted input plus output together, right? So, for example, uh, let's say Llama 38B. If you give input of 8B, then you will have no space for output. So you should give it maybe six kilo tokens, then you'll have two kilo tokens for output. So together they uh, consume eight key. That's why I wrote here remaining. So these are different models on the top uh, yellow background. Um, these are provided by API. So GPT, it's OpenAI, Claude, Gemini is from Google. And below is the ones which you can actually download and run on, on your computer, maybe using Alama. So what, what you see is, uh, first of all, that uh, local models, small models, uh, can have a substantial uh, context length, right? And, uh, and this, uh, this is just a short list. It may be expanded. There is not enough place, <laughs> space on, on this uh, slide. And we're testing, playing with them, and they actually behave good. So it's just something to know. Uh, next, uh, okay, Gemma, 2 billion parameters with 10 million context. I actually mentioned it here, uh, Gemma to be 10, 10 million, right? And, well, uh, people say that uh, Gemma to be is actually not a very good model, uh, but still it's interesting. So you can have a very small model and get up to 10 million uh, tokens uh, input and you can still fit it to run uh, in under 32 gigabyte uh, of memory. So there is some description and some links to follow if you're interested how exactly they do it. But uh, the main idea that instead of a big uh, matrix for attention, which would be like 10 million by 10 million, uh, you use a smaller local matrices, which are much, much smaller. Amazon uh, project called P. PI, a private investigator. So what it is, it's computer vision, which looks at the product before it's shipped, and it notices if the product is damaged and flags people to change it. AI is creating a golden age for scammers, right? There are a lot of reports because with the deep face and the gen AI, um, now scams become more and more sophisticated. So we have to be more and more careful. Um, Asana AI uh, teammates. So Asana uh, provides project management uh, software. It's like software as a service in the browser. It's similar to Jira. Like if you ever worked uh, with a team on a software development project, you probably heard about uh, Jira and uh, Asana. Uh, so now Asana uh, have AI tools uh, built into it. And uh, next is uh, Andrew Eng. So this is an interesting uh, post, article actually. Uh, so he talks that a barrier to faster progress in generative AI is evaluations, evals. And uh, uh, he discusses with adding a fact checking agent improve the result. So I just refer you to, uh, to these links and they will be in under the video. Uh, go to my uh, GitHub and you can download and follow the links. Uh, Jan Lecun, uh, what I and many most uh, people at FAIR have working is no mystery. We call it AMI, Advanced Machine Intelligence. Objective driven AI, uh, JEPA, world models, planning, reasoning is part of it. So there is a link to his uh, Twitter post. Uh, XAI, uh, owned by Elon Musk, is working on new models, modes, sorry, not models, modes of the Grok model. It's called uh, Socrates and uh, Day, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Uh, so what it is, it's, it's the same model, but if you run it in one of these modes, it starts behaving differently. Um, OpenAI uh, released GPT-4.0 uh, via API, and we actually started using it. Uh, Google AI overviews. Um, so this is a feature which Google introduced uh, last month. Uh, where when you Google something, you get AI generated answers. Um, so uh, last month, uh, it was about 27% generated answers. Now it's only 11%. I'm not sure why it's happening. They seems like roll it down a little bit. 
uh, meta NLLB, no language left behind. So this is an interesting model which supports 200 languages, including some rare languages with not a lot of data, but they still managed to make it work and published an article in Nature. AI agents in LangGraph. So this is a course, one of many courses at deeplearning.ai, which is Andrew Eng. And there are courses about LangChain and LangGraph and Autogen and CrewAI. So this is a good place if you want to educate yourself about working with agents. Okay, more news. Uh, thought augmented reasoning with LLM. Um, so again, th th this, this is interesting. This is a Twitter and uh, the original uh, article here. So, okay. Uh, the idea is that you create a buffer called buffer of thoughts. Well, not you create this methodology, which contains high level thoughts distilled from problem solving process itself. So using this buffer enhances the accuracy, efficiency, robustness of LLM based uh, reasoning. It demonstrates state of the art uh, performance on 10 challenging, uh, challenging tasks while requiring uh, less uh, cost multi query prompting methods like tree of thought okay so very interesting a very promising approach scalable mat mul free language modeling uh, sander thank you for referring uh, to this uh, article and uh, the idea is that instead of using uh, matrix multiplication which is here on the left they use uh, different technology and the result is uh, quite amazing. So you don't need uh, matrix multiplications and you can create a custom uh, processing hardware. So they use FPGAs and they achieve high performance on billion parameter models at a very, very low energy consumption. So maybe this is uh, groundbreaking and the way of the future. So it's, it's really interesting. Uh, Claude released their tools uh, in general availability. So this is the article from Anthropic, tools use GA, general availability. Okay, uh, Milvus. Uh, Milvus is a very good and very famous vector database, uh, can be used for RAG systems, retrieval augmented generation. And uh, well, it's a real database, so you need to install it. But what they did now, they created a model uh, called an, uh, a module, Python module, called uh, PyMilvus. And uh, you can do uh, pip install PyMilvus, and then from PyMilvus import uh, client, and then you create client and give it the file name. And what this will do, they will create a, a file on your computer and use it as a vector database. So for small uh, volume of work, this is a very simple, elegant, uh, convenient uh, solution. Uh, DSPY, prompt engineering is dead. So uh, here, here is the link uh, for the article uh, describing it. So uh, till a few months ago, prompt engineering was um, all the hype. The entire job market was filled with the role of prompt engineers but it's changing uh, people even wrote books blogs uh, like the best prompts and how to do prompt engineering and uh, large-scale experiments have clearly shown that there is no single prompt or strategy that works for all, all kinds of problems and it's just some prompts appear to be better in isolation but uh, hit and miss when analyzed comprehensively so dspy declarative self-improving pipelines is a framework developed by Stanford University that aims to simplify and streamline the process of building language models uh, uh, pipelines. So uh, it expresses LLM tasks at high level declarative manner, similar to PyTorch, self-improving pipelines automatically optimize LLM calls over time, modularity and ease of use. So this is example how you use this framework. So it's just Python, you see import DSPY, and uh, yeah, it, it, it may be a good thing if you have a pipeline and you want to tune it, tune the prompt, tune the performance with time. So Stanford people already created the framework for you. Okay, next, uh, right to warn. Well, there was a lot of controversy because uh, some people at uh, OpenAI were complaining that OpenAI 
is not diligent about security issues and uh, dangers of AI, and they were reprimanded for that. So now you see current and former employees from AI labs, including OpenAI, Anthropic, DeepMind, and supported by people like Joshua Benjo, Jeffrey Hinton, Stuart Russell. Uh, so they wrote a, a open letter and so what they're trying to achieve is to uh, allow employees to be open to express their concerns and uh, not being reprimanded for that. Uh, so eliminating not disparagement clauses concerning AI risk and contracts, establishing and facilitating anonymous channels for raising concerns, expanding whistleblower protections and anti-retaliation measures. Um, another big event, uh, event, I think it's really big, it's a Quen2 model from um, Alibaba. So think about it, it's open source, except for the largest model, which is 72 billion parameters. Uh, it comes in base and instruct versions, uh, open source, um, multilingual in 29 languages. It takes the first place in Chinese, by the way, uh, among all the models uh, around the world. So these are some links to GitHub and Hugging Face, uh, and it uh, achieve a sort of performance uh, on uh, different benchmarks. And we really want to use it because even on your personal laptop, you can probably use 7B version uh, easily and uh, check it out. And it's already available from Alama. Yeah, I provide the link here to Alama. Okay, uh, next is uh, automated knowledge graph construction with LLMs. So this is uh, uh, links uh, you can follow. So it's a uh, LAMA index. Uh, this is an uh, example of code, uh, how you do it. So automating knowledge graph construction with LLMs. So knowledge graphs are networks that represent data in a graphical format. So here is an example. Uh, difficulties of construction, uh, constructing them include the time and cost, as well as the fact that different graphs are needed for different domains. And LLMs can be used to extract knowledge from text and build the graphs. Uh, researchers are exploring ways to combine LLMs and knowledge graphs together. This could improve the accuracy of bo both knowledge graphs and LLMs. So it's interesting work. Um, another is about architectures of agentic systems. So these are uh, several typical architectures, uh, which you can see in the wild. Uh, so here, here, here's the link uh, to this article, which describes uh, this architecture. So one of the tricks is delegation. So you can use cheaper, faster models uh, for certain tasks. So for example, if your main, uh, let's say controller, supervisor, uh, agent is using Opus, which is big and expensive, but for some uh, simpler tasks, you can outsource it to, let's say, Haiku, which is a much smaller and cheaper and faster model. Uh, parallelization, so you can run uh, agents in parallel. Uh, debate, multiple agents with different roles, engage in discussions to reach better decisions. Uh, next is specialization. Uh, a generalist agent orchestrates uh, well, specialist uh, agents execute the tasks and tool suit experts when using hundreds or thousands of tools, specialized agents in tool subsets. Okay, so these are just some good uh, patterns of building architectures. Okay, uh, crowdsource arena. And this is again for, uh, as usually I provide only for English only. And uh, what, what we see is that GPT-40 keeps the first place, as it was last time. And I here marked uh, open source with green. So you see Llama 370B, Quen Max, uh, Llama 38B, uh, Yi, uh, Command R, Quen. I spoke about Quen 2, but it's not here yet. It's a, it's a new model. I'm really curious to see where it will go in this list. Um, okay, uh, layoffs. So we see layoffs uh, are much smaller than uh, previous year. So I always show this graph. Uh, this is me and thank you.